Well, unfortunately for the Minnesota Wild today, the lights were too bright as Winnipeg takes the first game of two straight here this weekend, four to two. But there are bigger concerns than simply losing a hockey game as Kirill Kaprizov and Philip Gustafson both left the game injured. Let's talk it out on today's Locked on Wild postcast. You are Locked on Wild postcast. Part of Locked On Minnesota on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Minnesota Wild lose by a score of 4-2. to I hate the Jets. I hate the Winnipeg Jets. But honestly, as frustrating as that game was, there are bigger concerns because both Philip Gustafson and Kirill Kaprizov left the game injured. It's just it's just such a frustrating game because you know the stakes are high. We talked about it in the pregame how big of a boost this could give the Wilds playoff chances at this point and the fact that they're going to need to gain some ground on teams ahead of them in the standings. And you just you just show up flat. You give up two goals because uh, <laughs> I actually laughed at the uh, the own goal um, that went in off of Spurgeon, off of Gustafson, because it just you knew at that point that it was going to be one of those kinds of games. And you then have the Winnipeg Jets deciding, well, hey, let's try to take a couple players out ahead of the rematch tomorrow because we know. We're going to have Laurent Brassois in net. So it's probably going to be a little tougher for us to win both games. So we better make sure Kaprizov and Gustafson can't play. It's just, it's so stupid. And Middleton ended up, um, Middleton ended up fighting Dylan to draw back. But like, I don't know. It's just, it's the same it's the same crap against the Winnipeg Jets every time the Wild play them. Took Kirill Kaprizov out last year in one of the Winnipeg matchups. And so, I, I don't know. I, I think the thing that I'm most frustrated about is that you just no-show at the beginning of a big game. And you can't spot a Winnipeg team two goals when they have Connor Hellebuck in net. You can't spot anybody that you're trying to seriously contend with for playoff picture you can't spot any of those teams two goals and expect to come away with a win and i mean we got the the full run of the mill of the adventure that is john merrill and alex goligoski again in this one and i don't know it's it's one of those things where it's it's f around and find out you start the game off on a much better note you probably end up coming away with the win but the fact that you decided you wanted to try to come back from down 3 nothing, you get what you pay for. And it just it's was just such an annoying game to take in because the Jets just could not stop handing the wild opportunities to c- come back in this game. And they just they, they just handed Winnipeg a win. Like I'm, I'm not, I I usually don't go the route of give no credit to the opponent, but I mean, you handed them the first goal of the game on just an insanely bizarre, insanely bizarre play, like a shot that was so far from actually hitting the net that of course it's going to deflect in off of. Jared Spurgeon. Of course it's going to deflect in because that's just the kind of stupid puck luck that teams like the Winnipeg Jets have to have. The injuries. It just it, I was infuriated watching this game and seeing all of this play out because it's just all such avoidable pre John Hines stuff. It's it's all the things that were happening that got Dean fired starting slow, just 
passing the puck around on the power play, having a six on four and not being able to do anything with it at the end of the game. Like it just, it, it was for the first time it was D it was Dean Evison vibes for this game. And that was the first time that's happened since John Hines took over in all of the other games that the wild have lost, you know, you, you, the Pittsburgh game, for example, is the most recent one. The wilds were still in it all the way down to the end. They had some, some hiccups along the way, but this just collectively was a, um, it, it just was just not ready for the big lights, not ready for the bright lights of playing against teams that you're trying to get into the conversation with in the postseason. It's just <sighs> it's frustrating. I can see the comments rolling in and everybody is right there with me. But so let's let's get to let's get to the big news. No updates on Kirill Kaprizov or Philip Gustafson to the point that um uh, Heinz isn't even ready to commit to Flurry for tomorrow. Uh, because I suppose they just want to see what they have to do with Gustafson first. I mean, obviously, if Gustafson's out, you're going to start flurry. You're not going to bring somebody up and just throw them right in. And so no update on Gustafson, but um, from the sounds of it, he alerted the training staff at some point in the second period. He came over to the bench. And so as Michael Russo tweeted out, um, he flurry started to kind of get himself ready because he knew if Gustafson was dealing with something that he was going to end up coming into the game. And so you, you, at that point, I, I hope that it was just precaution that they just pulled him out just to, you know, not let whatever it is get any worse. But then, I mean, Dylan hits Kaprizov in the back twice. So Kaprizov clearly in pain on the second one. And, you know, again, Middleton stepped up and uh, and made sure that uh, that Dylan knew that, I mean, look, it, it's it, it is not just a coincidence at this point because it's now happened twice facing this team that they decide the only way we can win is by trying to knock Kirill Kaprizov out of the game. It's it, it's not at this point. It's not a coincidence. That's just how the Jets operate. And so that's frustrating too, because there has been no update on Kaprizov either. And so I I don't I would imagine neither of them play tomorrow, which is just fantastic. Um I, I don't know. Like I think we're all in the same we're all in mostly the same spot about what we saw here today. And it's frustrating because uh, like I feel like a broken record in reacting to this game because so much of it was just so avoidable. And it's all the things that I literally had just talked about in the pregame. You've made up all this ground to get yourself back into the postseason picture. But in order to get further in, you got to beat playoff teams. You have to beat playoff teams in order to get yourself into that position. And you can't spot anybody two goals at the beginning. And my God, I mean, whether it be Goligoski whiffing on a shot at the top of the zone and uh, the Jets picking his pocket and taking it down the other way, and then you end up having Ryan Hartman have to take a penalty to prevent the Jets from scoring there, or John Merrill sticking his arms out, sticking his hand out to try to stop a puck behind the net. Shocker, didn't get to it. It ends up going to the Jets. They work it back around the zone. Merrill gets Olaid, turns around, and Nino Niederreiter gets lost behind the defense, and he's able to tap the, uh, the backbreaker goal in um, at that point in the game. And so, you know, credit to... Credit to Ryan Hartman for continuing to score now in four straight games. Hartman scored. Matt Boldy scored. 
I tweeted about it uh, before the third period started that the Wild needed to get the period started. Um, and they did. Boldy scored within like the first 20 seconds of the third period to make it three to two. But self inflicted mistakes, people. Self inflicted mistakes is the. Uh, the nature of this one for the Minnesota Wild. That's, I think, why it makes it so frustrating to have to react to a game like this because all of it is self-inflicted. And honestly, like, I was a little surprised at how terse John Hines was after the game. I think you could tell he was kind of ticked off about it too. Is And Matt Boldy talked about it with Kevin Gorg after the game. You can't start that slow against a team like this. You you can't. And so, you know, that, that's the big lesson here. Like, it's it's another one of those situations where you just I I don't know. I'm I'm between mad and disappointed because it's it's like when you do something wrong and your parents are like they they give you kind of that look and they're like, and you're yeah I know I know I know. But then don't do it. Don't do it. Just start the game in an effective manner. And we then could be talking about how the Wilds stepped up in the spotlight and were able to win a big game against the Winnipeg Jets. But now it just it's it's one that they, despite Winnipeg trying to hand right back to them, now you gotta you gotta regroup and rally to try to win at XL Energy Center tomorrow. It so it just it's really disappointing. It's a deflating game. We we talked, we heard all week about how the vibes have been off the charts for this team now that they have uh, after wrecking the Detroit Red Wings on Wednesday, that the vibes are off the charts. Crank wars between Brandon Duhame and Marc Andre Fleury. All that's great, but games like this can just suck the life out of uh, what you have been uh, really trying to build over these last few weeks. So I am frustrated beyond belief, just hideous, hideous start to this game. And I mean, I, I think at this point, like, I, I'm not even going to suggest lineup changes on the back end because we see it on a game by game basis and yet the concerned parties still find ways to get into the lineup like what why what what are what are we getting what are we getting from somebody honestly answer me this question what are we getting from goligoski and merrill that has any sort of redeemable value on the ice um but like what what are we honestly i don't know I, I can't see anything like there has to be something there has to be something that can be pointed to as to why those two continue to be in the lineup I have no hair left to try to pull out to try to figure it out. So let's talk more about this game. That was an UG. Um, we'll we'll get to your comments and we will uh, we'll get ourselves back on track. As John Hines said after the game, we'll be better tomorrow. But it feels like you could have just been better today. And then all of a sudden you're in position to maybe sweep the Jets and put out a little message out there to the rest of the Central Division that, hey, we're here to factor into the final conversation of this, not just a wild card spot. But no, we can't have that because in Minnesota, we can't have nice things. We can't have uh, we can't have nice things with our sports teams. So we'll uh, we'll continue the uh, Lockdown Wild postcast here coming up. We'll get to your comments. We'll talk about uh, what needs to happen to every part of this game um, as we continue today's Lockdown Wild postcast after this. 
Today's Locked on Wild postcast is brought to you by AG1, the daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health. AG1 can help you start 2024 on a high note by giving you a huge blend of vitamins and supplements. It's easier than trying to keep track of five or six different bottles of vitamins. You can get it all in one scoop that you put in a glass of water, and you are getting not only a huge boost of vitamins and supplements, but also a big energy kick as well. If you're somebody that goes into a little bit of a lull during the lunch hour, give yourself a delicious glass of AG1, and you can avoid some of those midday slumps. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. Drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. Check it out for yourself today. Today's Lockdown Wild postcast is also brought to you by Sleeper. The midway point of the NHL season is fast approaching, and with the Wild climbing back into the Western Conference playoff picture, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether your favorite players like Kirill Kaprizov, Matt Boldy, Jewel Eriksson Ek, or Marco Rossi go more or less than their expected stats in particular categories. It is so easy. You can set your lineup in under 60 seconds. And fans of the NHL can also play daily fantasy NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, and college football on Sleeper 2. Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKDOWNNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back to today's Lockdown Wild postcast. The Minnesota Wild fall by a score of 4-2 to two to the Winnipeg Jets. We've got Winnipeg Jets fans in the comments, which is fantastic. And so let's talk about the 4-2 uh, to two Jets uh, win and the fact that uh, Winnipeg is crying foul on the Minnesota Wild being a dirtier team than the Winnipeg Jets. And uh, the evidence given is Ryan Hartman injuring Nikolai Ehlers at some point uh, over the last few years. So um, I, I guess I'm going to have to go back and take a look. But Emmett uh, choosing to ignore the fact that Kirill Kaprizov has been injured twice against the Winnipeg Jets in the last two years, which is okay. That's fine. Um, you guys can clap back about the number of Stanley Cups that the Wild have won, the number of Super Bowls that the Vikings have won. Whatever, whatever standard response you want to come back with about Minnesota teams not winning championships because that's the only thing that people respond with in these types of situations, go ahead and be my guest because we've heard it a thousand times. That's the only thing that anybody responds with anytime they get called on an argument. So cool. Awesome. Thanks for joining the stream, uh, by the way, and uh, best of luck tomorrow in, uh, in the second part of this matchup between these two teams. Uh, let's go through the comments here. Jimmy's adventures will get us started uh, bad defensively, lifeless offensively. And it really was like just such a frustrating start that um, was just so avoidable. Like you just start the game off well, like with some jump, with some life. The Wilds able to uh, keep the Jets power play off the board. The Wilds scored on their own power play, but five on five, they just were not able to match what the Jets were doing uh, throughout the course of the game. So that, it, that that's something that they're going to have to do in tomorrow's encore is they're going to have to 
be better in five on five um, against the Jets because you know you can't get into a um, you can't get into a special teams battle even against uh, a team like the Winnipeg Jets. Like you gotta you gotta win five on five, and so the fact um, the fact that the Wild didn't here is uh, is the reason that they lost. Zeke joining us. Batman is awful. NHL officials are garbage. The Jets are garbage. Their fans are garbage. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. Like it's something that the league has insisted that they are trying to police better is those checks from behind. Two pretty good ones by Dylan and not called. Um just you can't let that kind of thing go if you're supposedly trying to clean things up um you just you can't do it like if you're going to try to clean up the game those kinds of hits have to be called and they weren't so that was frustrating about uh about this one um pretty much throughout Trav joining us. I only saw the third period. Wild looked atrocious. The mindset on the power play at the end was asinine. I mean, you have a six on four. I would, if it were me, I would try to get shots on net, but that that just was not the priority at that uh, at that point. It didn't seem perimeter perimeter passing dooms a power play, and um, it's it's not great. Okay. I, um, you know what? I don't usually do this, but, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to call kick out. I'm going to kick out. Um, we had a Jets fan in the comments that was going to lengths to say players like Jewel Erickson Eck are as dirty as they come. And so I, uh, see ya. See ya, Emmett. Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping in, but uh, we're we're not going to do that. So let's uh, let's get back on track because we've kind of derailed here. Um, because like you just you say things that are just clearly false, and um, it's it's bad. We we do need to talk about. Spurgeon's return. Mike here. What what the uh, WTF Spurge? Also, early shot margin was bad. Hartman earned his money and he doesn't score if he's left if he's uh, left on his goal. Lazy sticks led to PK. Goose can't pass anymore. Flowers mask is elite. Um a lot to uh, a lot to digest here, but um I I just I don't understand. Like what happened on that deflected goal that uh, Winnipeg was handed at the beginning of the game? Like how how do you have yourself positioned in that way to where the puck goes in off of you and then off of Philip Gustafson? Like I just I don't understand how that happens. It, it just I I just am so. I, I was so confused about how that play ended up happening, but that just was par for the course for uh, how this entire game ended up. And yeah, that um, that third pairing was was not great. As Bob notes, Zach slow and gone was as much to blame as uh, Stump. I call him JM four on the second goal, um, it, like. I, I don't I don't get why we continue to just run that pairing out there um and continue to expect that things are not like it's the definition of insanity. You repeat the same thing over and over and expect different results. It's not uh it's not likely get likely to work. I'd love to see Dakota Mermis in tomorrow's game. We'll see if we do, because there are obviously bigger injury concerns on the roster at this point than 
struggling third pairing defenseman. Quadrum joining us. I'm trying to remain positive. We're allowed one bad game, especially if Kaprizov's able to return tomorrow. Feel like we'll have a much better game tomorrow. Yeah, it, it that will be the encouraging thing. That this game still will be frustrating. Like I'm not gonna get, I'm not going to drop um that this was a frustrating game because it is. It was. But if the Wild do respond tomorrow and they pick up a win against the Jets and you get you get your splits of the two games, then yes, then we'll be we'll be in a much better frame of mind after tomorrow's game, but it just the one the games that are the games that are lost on uh, avoidable plays are the ones that um are the ones that I have the biggest problem with. So it's just frustrating. Um trying to get myself back on track uh, because there was just a lot of um response to Emmett who was yanked out of the uh out of the chat um you know we talked about it too in the uh, the pregame how i was hoping that the wild would continue to allow brock faber to take those top opportunities with spurgeon coming back um you know you don't have to rush him uh, you don't have to rush him back in, but then you look at the minute count and Spurgeon led wild defenseman in 20 with 25 minutes, 31 seconds. Uh, Brock Faber was second with 2256. <laughs> John Merrill played nine minutes. What are you getting out of those nine minutes that you couldn't get from Dakota Mermis? Like, what is the point of throwing a guy out there for nine minutes? In a 60 minute hockey game. <sighs> Ron is right. My blood pressure is starting to spike. And um, so I'm I, one of my one of my New Year's resolutions is going to be to try to find more creative and fun ways to harp on um, particular players so that it doesn't lead to me having the uh, little vein on the side of my head pulse with my frustration but um keith brings up an interesting point here i hope the um i hope the wilds management invest in a balanced decor after the buyouts it is worth throwing some money at uh this is a hundred percent an accurate call um they need to they need to find a better way to and look i I understand that a third pairing is a third pairing for a reason, but you can have a third pairing that is playable. Like we had a perfect example of that a couple of seasons ago um, with Ian Cole and Carson Soucy. Like that was a third pairing, but it was a playable third pairing. You can have a playable third pairing. For your decor, the Wild do not right now. Like, Zach Bogosian is the best of the bunch, but, I mean, again, nine minutes in a 60-minute hockey game. Give that, give those minutes to Faber. Like, I would much rather see Faber get those nine or M Mermis. Again, I, I just, I don't understand. Like, what the what you're getting from those two by having them in the lineup i don't get it i really don't and i know i'm not the only one who hosts a show hosts a podcast that wonders the same thing like there are other people asking these same questions and we continue to see it i just i don't get it and i never will i never will uh, Quadrum asking us, uh, do you see the Wild making trades for a third pairing, especially by the deadline? Now, this is this is going to be a tricky one because the Wild are not going to 
have a ton of money to spend depending on um depending on how much depending on when Brodeen comes off of long-term injured reserve they may have no money to spend unless they move John Merrill off the roster and free up 1.2 million so it's going to be tricky for the wild to make moves honestly i'd be much more fine with just giving Dakota Mermis that spot next to Bogosian. Just let that be your third pairing and uh, not continue to get... I, I called. I said John Merrill had a black hole game today. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds, it sounds ominous, doesn't it? It sounds like something that could really hurt your hockey team. And it did. It was, <laughs> it was minus two in nine minutes. I, I I don't get it. Um, Mike brings up a good point about, uh, especially on the Goligoski side, it's the contract. Like that's the reason Goligoski still here is because Bill Guerin has been adamant that because of the no move was in there, because of the no move was was in, um, he's going to be staying, and so. Like he, I, I get that one, but I just, I honestly do not understand. Um, I do not understand the, uh, I don't understand the John Merrill one. Like I literally can't even talk. I'm so, um, frustrated about what we continue to see. Uh, let's get to a couple more here and then we will, uh, We'll call it a day. Best high fives and secret handshakes in the league, though. <laughs> that's probably it. That's probably <laughs> that's probably the only redeeming quality at this point. Um, City Life Project joining us. Time to tank, baby. Um, I like where your head's at, but it's not going to happen. Um. The Wild are too, they're too far into this now. And, you know, I was talking about this with, uh, with somebody the, uh, the other day uh, with, you know, the Vikings. We'll use the Vikings as an example. They're seven and eight right now. I don't think there's anybody on this planet that is upset about the potential to lose those, um, those last two games. But that's just not how it works. Kevin O'Connell and Quasi Adolfo Mensa, they're here to win games. And so the Vikings are going to try to win these final two, just like the uh the Minnesota Wild are going to um try to win the rest of this season. Oh, is is that Isha? <laughs> It might be. I I it's it's under it's under a pseudonym if if it is Isha, but if it is, welcome, welcome to the stream, and uh we will continue our normally scheduled hating of the Winnipeg Jets. Um yeah, it if if it is, then that was definitely a troll comment, but in a fun way, in a playful way, not like Emmett, who we had to boot the hell out of here. A few minutes ago. Um, all in all, that was a frustrating game. And so I think rather than fully um rather than continue to fully dive into this frustration, I'm going to take the uh the wise advice of Quadrum and just um <laughs> it is Isha, and uh he's only 10% trolling. We salute you, Isha, for joining the stream. Um, yeah. Sorry, Emmett. I don't usually boot people out, but um huh. Erickson Eck dirty. Get out of here. All right. That's gonna do it for today. Wild lose in frustrating fashion. Uh tomorrow should be fun, hopefully, because I think people are gonna be people are gonna be on edge. The wild should be on edge. Respond after getting punched in the mouth. Um, 
that's that's really all I have. That's the only words of advice that I have for the Minnesota Wild in this one. Respond after getting punched in the mouth by the Winnipeg Jets, uh, and go out and win and go out and win a hockey game. That's as simple as this needs to be. Is go out and win tomorrow at home in front of a raucous XL Energy Center. Fans are going to be tuned in because you got a 1 p.m. start on New Year's Eve. People are going to be getting after it. And so it's going to be it's going to be raucous. And somebody said in the comments earlier, this is a perfect game for Marcus Foligno to just become unglued hit machine, just hitting everything that moves. Now, there is a point and we've seen this with the Minnesota Wild in the past. There is a point where they can go overboard and become entirely focused on retaliating and just completely lose sight of what's going on in the game. You don't need to get to that point, but let's let's get I mean honestly, if we have a game tomorrow that the Wild win and Felino, Hartman, Duhame, Middleton, Maroon, Dewar all fight, like how about how about we just have fight night on New Year's Eve tomorrow? Just have like six or seven fights, just a completely like a debacle type game that the Wild end up winning five to one and restore order. Set the tone. That's what we want for tomorrow. So thank you, everybody, for tuning into uh, our Lockdown Wild postcast here today. We will have one from the XL Energy Center after tomorrow's game as well. So make sure to uh, start your New Year's Eve with us. And uh, hopefully it'll be a raucous game and uh, hopefully it'll be another Minnesota wild win. Um, I, I would, I will lose my mind if we get a goalie fight. Uh, <laughs> if we can get a goalie fight in tomorrow's game, I'm going to lose my mind. So let's hope that it happens. We'll see wild need to win and we will see if they can get it in tomorrow's game. Uh, for more on the Minnesota Wild, make sure you subscribe to Lockdown Wild. Hit that like button before you uh, take off, and uh, we'll keep you company for tomorrow's game as well. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.